Hello friends. When you first start animating with Tahoma 2D, it's easy to feel overwhelmed with what's on screen. So today, I want to take you on a tour of the interface so you can navigate it easier whilst animating. Let's get into it. So, as I showed you last week, when you first start Tahoma 2D, you'll see the startup pop-up and the tips pop-up. So let's close both of those two. So what you see here is the first room. And each room is made up of a number of square panels docked into the program. So at the very top of each room, you have the menu, and at the top right, you see the list of rooms, and you're currently in the 2D room. We'll look at the others in a few minutes. So in this 2D room, at the left is the toolbar, with tools to use whilst animating, like selection tools, drawing tools, and editing tools. And as you select them, notice how the bar below the menu shows the options for that tool. And this is the options toolbar. The next panel you can see is the style editor, and this contains the color wheel for choosing the color to draw or paint in. And in the tabs at the top, you can choose different brushes for the two raster drawing types, choose textures to apply to areas of your drawings, choose different patterns, fills and brushes for vector drawings, and then change some of the settings for these brushes. Then below that is your palette panel. This is where you store different brushes and colors that you're using in your drawings so you can easily change between them. Then at the bottom of the screen, there's the timeline. And this is where you place your drawings to show them in the right order to create your animation, using layers to place some drawings in front of others. Then at the right is the level strip, and this shows all of the drawings that you have in each drawing level but more on that in a later video when we look at drawing levels. And finally, in the center, this is, as you'd guess, the drawing area, which in Tahoma 2D is called the viewer. And the reason I'm using all of the official names for the panels is because you can change which panels are shown in the rooms and they're all listed in the panels menu. So learning the official names now will speed up the process of using the program and when talking with other Tahoma 2D users especially if asking for help. So that's the 2D room, but let me show you the other rooms. But first, don't forget that if you want to understand the panels in each room in more detail, as well as more details of how to draw and animate into Homer 2D, I cover this in my online course, along with all the tools and everything you need for traditional style 2D animation. So check out the link in the description to get the best price and to start learning today. So back to the Tahoma 2D rooms, starting next with the stop motion room, and yes, you can do stop motion in Tahoma 2D too, and that I'll show in another video. So do be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I do. Then there's the timing room. And this is set up to make it easier to change the timing of any automated animation or animated effects. So you'll see the function editor in the left hand side here. And then we have the FX room. And this has a schematic at the top left for organizing your layers and adding effects to them like blurs, glows, and many, many more. And at the bottom, you can see the list of effects broken down into folders here. And then there's the browser room. And this isn't a room I use too often, but is a room to help you work with your files on disk and does have a few handy shortcuts to access them. But I tend to use my regular Windows Explorer for most of this. However, I will show you a few tips in here in a future video. And finally, we have the history room. And this just has the one large panel in it to show your undo history. And it's not something you'd need to see too often, but if you want to see what's in your history buffer, you'll find it here. So back to the 2D room. And this is the room where I'll be for most of the upcoming videos, as it contains most of what you need for animating. So to get started animating, we have to create a project and scene. But what's the difference, and when would you create each of them? Well, that's what we'll look at next time. So I hope you can join me for that, because it'll really kickstart your animation. And that's a guarantee.